Inc. stands for innovation and knowledge, and I'm here to talk about the power of ideas. Now, I'm also going to use a bit of my phone because uh, I haven't come here prepared. I've just started scribbling some notes after I came in here, so I'm, you have to excuse me if I sound a bit incoherent as well. I truly believe India's time has come because uh, a lot of people say this, a lot of people keep talking about what a you know, great opportunity that India presents today. There is a great saying, it goes, nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. I truly believe this is going to be India's decade, this is going to be India's century. And why do I believe that? Why do I sincerely believe that India really has arrived on the world stage? That is because we are talking innovation, we are talking knowledge. And what has India got? India has today got the world's largest think force. More than 50% of our population is less than the age 27. Now that the world is aging, India is getting younger. And this generation of Indians has a certain aspiration, has a certain ambition, has a certain aggressiveness, which was hitherto never ever seen or exhibited anywhere on the world stage. So truly, I am a firm believer that India and the power of idea combined is going to propel us, is going to take us to the next level altogether. Now, I'm going to shamelessly also borrow from a lecture that I've heard about, I think, a year ago. Ajit is here. When we were launching uh, RICH, the Research and Innovation Circle of Hyderabad, trying to harness the research that happens in our institutions, use it, leverage it, you know, make it applied in the, in the regular domain that we all live and work in, we had uh, Mr. Mashelkar, R.S. Mashelkar, who came in as the chief guest that day on our invitation. He said something which has really, really left a very strong impression on me. He said, what India needs today, we talk about innovation, we talk about disruption, we talk about knowledge economy, we talk about the business opportunity that India is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He said some three things, which I think were truly my take-home message that day. He said, what India needs is not leapfrogging. People talk about how technologies can help you leapfrog. He said, India cannot make do with leapfrogging anymore. India needs, truly, to pole vault. We need that kind of propulsion systems. We can't make do with leapfrogging. If India really has to join the league of first world countries in the next 10 years. And for those of you, you know, who are still naysayers and a bit cynical about how India can, you know, across that chasm, across that barrier, there is a solid example which has evolved in the last 10 to 15 years right in front of us. Having a phone, a landline, was a rarity. You know, you had to, it was called PPE number, I don't know if some, some of you could relate to it, you know, Pakintiwala uh, phone number, you know, the neighbor's phone. You know, that was such a luxury, having a phone, having a landline. You had to know somebody in the government. You had to get a recommendation letter from a member of parliament because BSNL was a sole entity which could give you a phone connection. But look at it now. Once this thing has come on and taken center stage, today, more than a billion phones in India, and more than 40% of them are smartphones. That is what is pole vaulting. That is what is, that is not leapfrogging. We have just completely leapfrogged, pole vaulted, and broken many, many barriers. And today, even the common man of India, the arm army of India, has access to this and has the power and completely to leverage the to leverage the power and ability of using a smartphone. He also said something which is equally important. I know there are a lot of venture capitalists here, but I think what India truly needs, when we talk about all the things that were exhibited, that were talked about, we had share chat, which talked about fantastic things, communicating, conversing in multiple languages, languages other than English, the vernacular. He was absolutely right, Ehsan. He said, everything in India changes every 150 kilometers. Absolutely. Our culture, habits, speaking, dialect, everything changes every 150 kilometers. So you need local solutions. You need solutions, recipes, and formulas that are developed for India. You cannot merely copy and paste what is being employed elsewhere in the world. For instance, as a minister of information technology and urban development, I get pitched on multiple ideas from various companies. So I had a a representative of an American organization coming in talking about smart cities. 
He said, sir, we have a wonderful solution. I said, what is it? He goes, if somebody cuts into your lane abruptly, you know, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a highway or on a Hyderabad street, I can send you an alert to your command control center. Well, I looked at him and I said, fabulous. But can you give me an alert when somebody is actually heading at me in a one-way street? He said, why would you need that? I said, welcome to India, welcome to Hyderabad. <laughs> Point is, I think what, what works or what worked in Los Angeles, Barcelona, Europe will not work here. We need Indian solutions. We need very, very local solutions. We need our own recipes, we need our own formulas. But if we need our own formulas, if we need our own recipes, then people sitting in Sand Hill Road or Bay Area have to open their purse strings, have to be a bit adventurous. What India needs is adventure capital, not venture capital. We cannot make do. We need, we need people who are willing to bet big on India and innovations in India. And this also, again, like I said, I've shamelessly borrowed from Marshalkar. And I truly believe India needs that. The third thing he told me, which left a very lasting impression. He said, people talk about best practices. How can we imbibe from the best in the world? Why you should not reinvent the wheel? Why you should not worry about discovering everything afresh? He said, that is also not going to work. This is not the age of best practices. This is, if India really has to evolve, pole vault, and really propel itself to greatness that it has always been destined for. What India needs is the next practice. India needs to define the next practice, set the next benchmark for the world and for itself as well. So these three things, most certainly I think, hold true. These ideas hold true for any change that you want to bring about. The other thing I'll quickly mention, the power of an idea. As I've said, nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. I'm not talking Apple and Newton. I'm not talking Apple, the Apple we know. Apple and Newton, right? I'm, talking, I'm going to talk about three other things besides the mobile phone we just talked about. Today, we live in a world where the largest transporter does not own a vehicle, Uber. We live in a world where the largest bookseller does not own a bookstore. And we also live in a world where people like Elon Musk have redefined the way we think, the way we used to think at least, and the way the entire paradigm has shifted. Point I'm trying to make is, nothing truly can stop an idea which really has the ability to shift the entire paradigm, to shift the entire conundrum that we face on a daily basis. There was this, you know, when Detroit, talking about Elon Musk, Detroit was the hub of the entire automobile industry in the United States. The 3D mantra they talked about, define, design, deliver. This was the 3D mantra that was espoused. But later on, the, you know, the, the, the young guys in Stanford, the young guys in MIT, the young guys in Harvard, the way they have come about and the way they've started building this knowledge economy, the innovation economy, the ink economy, the ink world, as we call it. Today, there is a new mantra, the three I mantra. Innovate, incubate, incorporate. It's the, the old 3D mantra does still hold true, but its definition has changed. The new 3D mantra again is digitize, decarbonize, decentralize. I think that's what the world is looking for. That's where the world is trying to find some solutions. Be innovative, incubate, and also incorporate and come out with solutions on the problems that the world is facing. The last two things I'd like to make up. Governments and governance within a country like India also need to be innovative, also need to deploy the power of ideas. One of the quick examples I can point out to. Governments typically talk about some very, very ambitious uh, agendas, ambitious efforts, but what is more important is to be in sync and to be in tune with the realities on the ground. When we started off as a new government in the state of Telangana, we started defining some new policies, we started formulating new ideas. One of the things we also started doing is, try, we, we tried to understand the pain points for a common man. One example, quick example that I can give you. How government can really patronize, how government can really help a budding entrepreneur in a country like India, in a state like Telangana. When we started looking around and one of the sectors we picked was the transport department and the 
police department. One of the common complaints and common you know, uh, issues we all run into when we travel in a city like Hyderabad or Bombay or Delhi or Chennai or Bangalore, we drive our vehicles and then sometimes we get stopped by the traffic police. They ask you for three things. They ask you for a registration card, they ask you for insurance, they ask you for a driver's license, of course. A lot of times, the kind of, you know, hyper-paced lives that we all live in, hyper-paced world that we all live in, we forget one of the documents for sure. We're bound to do that. But when we started looking at them, then we have to pay a fine and do whatever you have to do. I don't have to explain on that. So we started looking at this. We said, how can we actually take care of this? We live in a very smart world. People are used to smartphones. How can we actually help our people? Then we actually gave this idea, this pain point, this problem to a startup in Hyderabad. It's called Radical Tribe. We gave this problem to them. They said, you know, we can come out with a solution. In no time, this young team came out with a solution which is not out of the world, which is nothing, nothing which has not been done before, but it's just a combination of great ideas and synergy and convergence. What they've done is essentially, on a smartphone, they've developed an application, an app, called RTA M Wallet, which you can download onto your phone, wherein you can store all the three things that I've just mentioned, your driver's license, insurance, and registration card, all in a digital format in that digital wallet. All you need to do next time a cop st stops you is flash your smartphone, they're ready to accept it. Now this app has been downloaded more than 1.5 million times by the citizens of Hyderabad. Now that is the power, that is the power of a startup, an idea, when a government actually takes it very seriously and also patronizes. The one thing we did as a new government when we assumed office here, we said, how do we redefine the way we do business? Currently, Telangana is ranked the number one state on ease of doing business in the entire country. And there is a reason why. When we talk to investors, overseas or Indian, when we talk to them, the one thing that they keep telling us is, it's a very difficult country to do business, you know, the red tape, et cetera, et cetera. So we started formulating new policy. And when we were, start, when we were formulating this new policy, we said, what is important? We brought about our policy by statute, one of the first policies that we brought out as a new government, which is truly unique and which is truly path-breaking for any government in India. I'll just give you three salient features, and I, I think you'll understand the power of an idea and how it can really change the way a government functions also. The three salient features of our industrial policy called as the TSI pass. One, we allow for what is called a self-certification. So you as an investor wants to invest in the state of Telangana. We will not ask you to seek any clearance. As long as you believe that you are going to be in compliance with the law of the land, you can come in, hit the ground running, start your enterprise on day one. You need not seek a clearance from us. No other state in India. No other state in India will tell you this. The second thing we do, we brought in timely clearances. We said, let's ensure that everybody gets a clearance in 15 days. You must have heard this before, single window, single window systems, et cetera, et cetera. But the joke is, there is always multiple windows behind that one single window. And you, know, you have to go on the merry-go-round, right? What we've done, which is truly unique, which makes us truly outstanding is, if we don't clear, if we don't clear your application in 15 days, on the 16th day, it's a deemed approval. It's an approval by default. No other state in India will tell you this. And the third thing and the most important thing we do, we actually levy a fine of rupees 1,000 per day to our bureaucrats if they actually hold up your clearance from the 16th day onwards. No other state in India will tell you this either. So I was in New York City last summer. I explained this whole policy to John Weimeyer, who is the chairman of Global uh, KPMG Global. I told him, no other state in India offers you this. He said, no state in the United States also offers you this. So you might as well say, this is one of the best in the world. I'll just leave you with one last parting thought. thought. We live in an age of uncertainty. We live in an age of IoT, Internet of Things. Your, all your appliances talking to each other. They don't talk to you, but they talk to everything else in the house. You know, you know the world we live in. In this uncertain world, I think ideas are the only tool. Ideas are the only thing that can help you. Because as they say, the best way to predict the future is to create it. 
And therein lies the power of ideas. Thank you very much for this opportunity. <laughs>